Hey everybody, Shelly here. So you may have learned what value is, but do you know how to use it in your paintings? So today we're gonna to talk about using value in creating good paintings. So simply put, value is how light or dark a U or a color is. Here's a look at a value scale that groups the values in lights, half tones or mid tones as I like to call them, and dark values. This can be very helpful when trying to simplify a reference image. You can see here I've converted my reference image to black and white and I'm comparing the value scale to the colors I've selected to mix on my paint palette. Another good tip is to take a photo of your paint palette, convert it to a black and white image, and then see that it matches the image that you have here. So the vocal point is the area in your painting that you want the viewer to look at. It's the area that demands the viewer's attention. A strong vocal point can solidify your composition. You can use value to drive the viewer's focus through a painting. A strong vocal point will happen in an area of high contrast, a place where a very light object is next to a very dark one. Here I not only changed my reference image to black and white, but I also used the posterize filter in Photoshop to turn it into a noten, which allows me to really see my vocal point. Notons are great for simplifying values and making them easy to see. Let's take a look at this simple ball with one light source to better understand how value creates volume. You could simplify this image into a four value noten, but let's take a closer look. One of the lightest values will be the center light area. If this were a face, it would be the part of the face that has the most direct light hitting it. Next, you see the highlight. For instance, if this were a portrait, it would be on the tip of the nose to one side. Keeping things simple, next would be the form shadow. This is the part of the object that has no light hitting it. It is in shadow. The cast shadow in this scenario is usually the darkest part of the image and it is created because the object is blocking light to the surface. For instance, the nose usually has a cast shadow just below the nostril area. Now digging in a little deeper, the terminator line is where the form is turning into shadow. And in colored portraits, this is often the most saturated area on the face. You'll wanna look for the reflected light, which is going to bounce off of surfaces onto your form. It will lighten the shadow area. And here's a tip for you, beginner painters often paint reflected light in too light of a value. So that's how value creates volume and form, and here's what happens without it. Your images will be flat. So before I start painting, I like to look at my image, my reference image in the noten form and really understand where my values lie. And then I'll look at it as a black and white version and I'll have those images set up next to my painting reference so that I can make sure my values are staying controlled. Now, Looking at painting this nose, you can see how it's so important to understand the way the light hits the face, the way that the nose turns away from the light and where the highlight is on that right side of the tip of the nose. This really allows the viewer to feel the volume and the 3D effect of the nose on the face without creating those value, form, shadow areas, taking the four values, the center light, the highlight, the mid value, the form shadow, and turning it into um, this nose, it would have just been a flat object, like a little triangle <laughs> laid on the face. Now, when you're painting a portrait, that's not the uh, end result that you're going for. You want that nose to look like it's popping forward off the canvas. And in order for that to happen, you have to create volume by using value. Now, it can get tricky when you're painting in color. 
That's why I like to group my palette in my light value group, my mid value group, and my dark value group. So when I'm trying to create form and volume, then I know I have to select from this area or that area, depending on whether I need a dark, middle, or light value, and or if I need a highlight. So here's a look at the finished portrait. I feel like she has good volume and lots of 3D effects happening here. Hey, so I just wanted to come on and do a quick reminder. I wanted to remind you guys that I would like to see or take in some of your paintings so that I could critique them on one of the YouTube videos. So go in the description below, find my email, which is Shelly at ShellyJCox.com. Send me an image for a critique. Don't be afraid to send me an image. We all start out somewhere. Critiques will hugely help you. It's what helped me the most. I can't even express to you how much critiques can help improve your paintings. No matter what level painter you are, we all need critiques. All right, you guys, I'll be looking for those paintings. So the thing to understand here, using value to create depth, as objects move further away from the viewer, the values have less contrast. By turning my reference image into a black and white four value noten, I can better see and understand this concept. Now this reference image has some really great depth to it. But let's turn it into a black and white image and you can see how there's still good depth there but you don't quite understand the values so when I hit it into a noten I can really see there's just four values and I know exactly where they need to be in order to create this great depth the original reference image is showing us. Here's another really great image with a lot of depth to it. But let's explore the noten. And again, you can more easily understand in your painting where you need to put your light value, your mid value, your dark value. And this image really drives home the concept of the further away things are, the less contrast you have. I mean, look at all that sharp contrast right in the front here, the dark pants next to that whitish blanket and rock and then it just gets a little bit lighter and less contrasty off in the distance. And it's always great to use a Noten or a black and white reference image to create a one color underpainting. And this is really helpful if you're just learning to understand how to use value in creating your portraits and really pushing the 3D effect and getting that volume and creating depth so you can paint your underpainting with one color as you see me doing here and then once it's dry to the touch you can go right back on top of it with your color so you no longer have to worry about value because you're going to match the colors on your paint palette to the area you're laying down and the underpainting is dry so for instance if you lay down a color on an area and it's say it's too light or it's too dark, you just wipe it away and you revisit the palette. If you need to get a darker color or a lighter color, you do that and lay it down and then you'll know the value is correct because it's matching the value map that is underneath. And it's just gonna allow you to focus on color by itself. And when you did the underpainting, you were allowed to focus on just the values and the composition. And then here you can see the um, finished underpainting. And then once it was dry, I went ahead and I painted color right on top of it. And here's the final resulting portrait. So this fourth value tip, you will use it to create optical illusions. To do that, you take colors with similar values or even the same value and with low contrast. And this will create the illusion of movement or vibration. These images were created by Agnes Martin. She 
understood this concept and used it very, very well. It's a concept that I'm still uh, experimenting with and trying to get a grasp on. I'm thinking about using it more in clothing or backgrounds to create movement. And uh, that's just something that you should play around with and learn to create your own optical illusion using value. So I hope those tips on using value to find your vocal point, create volume and improve your 3D effect, to give yourself more depth, or maybe even create an optical illusion within your painting. Use those tips and I think your paintings might um, just show some improvement. I know mine did. Once I really understood how to use value in my paintings, it made all the difference. So I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one.